Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review for the game Territories the Card Game, in which you'll be playing as a specific territory or region and their specific faction. I have two factions here, the Pack Tribe and I have the Machine Tribe, and in this game you're playing a 1v1 battle. However, there is a 2v2 mode and a King of the Hill mode, in which you're basically going to be going back and forth against each other, gathering new territories, champions, and relics, as well as spells, and utilizing what is in your deck in order to defend defeat your opponents. Every time you defeat an opponent's territory or unique specific champion, you're going to gain points. And your objective? Gain 18 points before your opponent. The game plays similar to games like Magic the Gathering and Warlord and other similar games that involve a TCG type strategy. However, this one here is fully integrated with its own specific decks and it plays quite differently in terms of how you're going to be utilizing your units. You'll be placing down a territory and champions based on that territory's allotted amount of food. Then you'll be utilizing those champions champions on the next turn to attack, utilizing a die as well as their attack and the other benefits you might get to reduce your opponent's champion's health totals and of course their ter territory's health totals. To get them to zero, that'll score you those points and up to a certain point you'll start finally getting enough points to win the game, beating 18 points. Can you do that before your opponents? Uh, find out while I show you the game down below, then we review it, and then finally we do a outro. So here we have the game Territory the Card Game, which plays two players, four, or a King of the Hill mode. I'm going to just go ahead and show you the one versus one mode, where I am playing with the pack deck and the machine deck. And in which case, to begin the game, gather your cards, set your territory deck aside and your main deck of 70 cards aside, shuffle the main deck and deal out 10 cards to yourself, and shuffle this territory deck, or I guess just look at this territory deck, and choose one of the territories and place it in the middle territory area to its side, just like this. Each player will do the same thing as well. Go ahead and set the tokens and other dice aside in within reach of all players, and then you will go ahead and begin. Choose a starting player, and that player will begin the rounds of play. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to drop to your hand of 10 plus one card, one card every single turn, and then you're going to gain two spell power. In this case here, for the first turn of the game, you won't gain any spell power, but for every conceding turn or corresponding turn, you're going to gain two up to a maximum of five. Um, then you're going to uh, play a territory from your deck if it's round three or round five and take any effects from beginning and end of turn. Then you'll have your first action phase, and you can play champions in your territory areas. You can never have more than three champions in a territory area, and that number is based on the amount of food supply that you have. Every round, you're also going to turn one of the territories 45 degrees to signify that it's gaining food. You'll start with two, then move to three, and then five. And every third and fifth round, you're, every, thir every third round, you'll place a territory down from this deck here randomly, and then, of course, the fifth round as well. When placing champions, uh, make sure that you check their food supply and make sure that it is corresponding to this one here. So in this case here, I can play these two because they're only costing two food supply, which is uh, less than the amount of food required in order to play them here and of course less than the number of champions uh, maximum I could have here. They have five health each, they cost one food, they have one attack each, they both can move once, and only this one here, the uh, the war dog, actually has a range of one. And they also have unique abilities, which I won't go into too much detail, but this one here says it counts as being from the tribal faction of the territory that it occupies. And this one over here says whenever there's a Dasis champion in play in this area, he'll do one damage to an opposing champion at the beginning of turn. When champions come into play, they're turned to the side, meaning you cannot utilize them until the next turn. They're basically too tired to fight. They just came out. They're just starting battle. So they'll be turned just like this. And of course, if there's nothing else you want to play or can play, you'll end your turn after following the combat phase, which in this case you can't fight because these guys are sleepy, and the second action phase, which is basically the same as the first action phase, allowing you to do things like move as well as um, do other things like placing down units and territories and whatnot. You'll come to this player's turn. In this case, player will draw the card, player will gather the power of the spell, uh, the spell powers, and then place it near them, uh, turning their, ch their territory, and then they can go ahead and place things like, um, and their, their first main phase, things like relics. Relics can be placed next to territories that you have in play, and you can also place champions down. And in this case, I think I'm going to go ahead and just play this character here and this character here. So we have our two goblin runners. And once per turn, if a goblin runner moves, it'll gain two attack power. So if they move, they'll be able to gain that plus two attack power, but just until end of turn. So they'll utilize these little markers to indicate bonus attack. But because these guys came into play, 
they're also going to be sleepy. I can also play spell cards like this one here. I can go ahead and play that. It'll cost me two and I'll be able to draw five cards from this deck over here. After you draw your cards and at the end of your turn, you'll discard cards down to your maximum hand size of 12 cards. It'll then go to the next player's turn, turning this over, popping this up, and uh, then they're going to go ahead and be able to attack now. So this player can go ahead and draw his or her card, gain his spell power, and then choose to play anything if they would like. Mm, I could draw three, I could draw five, draw five cards if I want this turn, but maybe I'll just go ahead and save them. And I'll go ahead and show you how combat works in the game. Uh, you'll choose your champions, you'll turn them to the side, indicate the territory you wish to attack, then the opposing player or faction will be able to choose to either have the damage go directly to the territory or block with the characters present underneath that specific territory. This character will attack first. You'll roll this die here for each character, apply its uh, bonus effects plus the bonus effects of damage on here by the character and any spells. In this case, it's three plus one, which is four. Four would be directed to here. I could take that damage if I wanted to. If you do, you're simply going to take this attack minus the defense, and then do the damage. In this case, it would be two damage, and you go ahead and place the damage on here appropriate so you know how much health is left remaining. If you lost this territory, you would lose everything connected to it, and you would give the other player that many victory points. So be careful when assigning damage to your territories. However, if I didn't want to take damage to my territory, I could have this damage go directly to one of my goblin runners. I could block with a goblin runner, thusly taking four damage directly on the runner, and he has a total of five health, so he's still okay. He'd come back. Then this guy would then attack. I'd roll the die. Oh, there is going to be two plus one, which is three damage. I uh, would we'll assign the damage. Maybe I'll choose this guy again. That would remove him from play. Whenever you remove a character from play, the other player will gain victory points, 18 being the required amount to win the game. And they're also going to do the rest of the damage uh, over. It's kind of like tramples over to the next character. In this case, it would go ahead and do two damage to my other goblin runner. Or if I didn't want to do that, I could have the damage redirected to my territory, in which case it would be two minus two, but you always do one damage regardless of how uh, little damage you do. So in this case, I would do one damage to here if I didn't want to block with my other dragon uh, or my other goblin runner. And that would be it. That would be the full combat phase. We'd go back into the main phase. He could play anything he or she wishes to play, and then play would pass. And that's how the game works for the most part. Uh, only thing I was going to really explain is, like I said, with movement, if you have movement during your main phases, you can move your characters based on the number of movement you have. If, you have, if you're over here and you have one movement, you can move to over here. And if you have two and you're over here, you can move like that. Range works similarly as well. One range means you can attack here. Two range means you can attack here. And if you don't have range, you can only attack across the way. And you're always hitting these uh, territories that are going to be placed here. During the third turn, you're going to go ahead and flip over one of these guys and place it here. And it'll be turned to the side. And during the fifth turn, you'll place another one and you place over here to the side. And they function the same as before. Every turn, you're going to turn them up to the point where it'll give you five food, which will allow you to play your strongest champions in these areas down below. And when somebody hits 18 points, the game is over, and that player is the winner. It's a pretty straightforward style game. Uh, each of these artifacts are going to have unique little um, bonuses, like this one says, whenever you cast a spell, you'll draw a card. And all of these territories will also have unique benefits as well. Sometimes the these specific artifacts or relics, I should say, will allow you to get a benefit whenever you move a character across from their area. So if I move this guy over here and this said something like plus one attack for any character that moves across here, you provide those benefits to those specific characters, as well as, of course, keep track of all your champions. Each of them will have a unique effect. It might be a beginning of a game effect. It might be a game that triggers something that triggers during attack or at the end of game. And that, for the most part, is how you play the game Territory of the Card Game. OK, let's come up and I'll talk about it. So let's discuss Territory of the Card Game. The uh, first thing to note is this game plays like most other TCGs you've played, Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon. Uh, they also have graphic design that resembles those type of cards, and every card it's going to have the health and defense, and maybe the cost of the card is involving food up at the top right. Uh, the bottom left of the card is going to have its attack, its movement, and its uh, range. There's going to be a certain type of card, and that will be shown here at the top left, and then the bottom right will be how many points you get if you're able to defeat it. The middle is going to involve the text, 
rest of the card and maybe flavor as well as in the right there in the middle in this little flag area is going to be the name of the card. Uh, different types of cards, so spells and the different relics that you can play next to your territories, territory cards, and of course champions. Champions being the most important thing that you're going to be utilizing in your deck uh, for the most part, at least with the tribes that I have. Uh, and all of it's really well done, really easy to understand. One small complaint I have is knowing what card goes to what tribe. Now they are color coded and they do have a symbol on them, but the symbol typically is represented in the middle of the card uh, as kind of like an opacity area. This here has got the little witch hat, which means it's the Dasis tribe. And so you'll know what different types of cards there are based on the colors and of course that little symbol. But I think it'd be a little easier if it was actually posted onto the card somewhere next to maybe the banner or whatever. I don't know, but it took me a bit of time to figure that out. Uh, the artwork for the game is excellent. High quality, dark, gritty graphics, uh, similar to like Magic the Gathering up until like about 10 years ago, I suppose. The art is kind of like dark. It's got a foreboding nature. It's highly detailed, high quality, well done artwork. I'm a big fan of this type of artwork and I'm a big fan of the design of the cards as well because when you see the game, you're instantly able to recognize what type of game it is, how it's played for the most part, uh, just simply by the design of the cards. So whoever did that, uh, kudos to you. You probably had a lot of uh, experience dealing with other TCGs that have done well. Uh, you're also going to be getting these chips here. These chips are going to be armor or they're going to be attack and they are going to be utilized in um, basically end of turn or as long as this card is in the specific area, you'll place the chip on as a way to recognize that this card gets a bonus to it, either attack or defense. Uh, there are going to be your little dice here. Uh, the little ones are going to represent basically a bunch of counters and the big one is for attacking. Basically when you attack, like I said, you're going to be attacking with the die and with any cards or spells that you have utilized on the champion and the champion's attack. So there's a little bit of variability as to how much damage you do, and more damage is obviously better when you're dealing with cards with high defense. Um, uh, so that's pretty much the idea of the game. It's got high, good quality bits. The cards are high quality. This is obviously all a prototype. The Pox is obviously a prototype. So what I expect to see from this game is probably uh, maybe chips that look a little differently, and maybe the, the box itself here are going to be a little higher quality, and of course the box that holds the uh, the cards. But the cards are, themselves are rather nice, and the artwork is really well defined on the cards. Um, it also has the player mat too, which indicates the different areas of play, uh, which works really well. However, it's kind of... Mm, you have to and understand that you can place more than two cards in that specific area where the champions go underneath the territories. It looks like everything's supposed to fit to to, to square, but it's not like that. It's it's based on how many how much food you have available in that territory, so how many cards. The gameplay of the game, uh, like I said before, if you played. Imagine the other, those type of games. It's it's pretty simple. You're going to be placing out your territory. You'll be placing out champions under that territory. Uh, as the game progresses, you'll place out more territories. More champions will go under them. The value of the amount of food each one of them will produce will increase based on the round. And you'll be attacking. You can't attack when they first come into play, but you can attack afterward. They have special abilities on them. They have unique passives and actives that you can kind of utilize that will benefit you in battle. Each of the different tribes is going to have a unique twist to them as to how they function, whether it be attack or defense or move or even ranged, and of course there are going to be these cool relics. Relics attached next to territories. If you, did, if you lose a territory, it's very damaging, especially if you only have one, because you'll lose everything around it. So you have to be really careful when you put those territories out and allow yourself to take damage uh, to them. So be very selective, uh, because you'll lose those relics that are attached to them. If relics get removed when they're attached, the opponent will gain points. And they'll get points for everything that has been removed, and everything that has a point value underneath them, because the objective of the game is to get those 18 points. As the game ramps up, you will score more and more points. The game feels very, very balanced, at least with the two decks I have played, uh, the machine deck and the uh, pack deck, and how they function uh, is, is going to be relatively close. So you will be doing little swings back and forth as the game continues. Like I said, it gets uh, your deck starts feeling stronger. Your areas might not have as many creatures in them, but you will be able to utilize the stronger creatures in your deck, which are really cool. It's a, kind of like a twist in the style of gameplay. Um, you have to keep track of things in this game. So my main complaint is there's a lot of tokens you need to utilize. You need to know what round it is, uh, so that way you can determine how much food each of your territories have, how many territories you need. You're going to have uh, tokens that you need to use for your spell power, spell 
mana currency that you're going to be utilizing to play spells, and you'll get a certain amount, so you have to keep a track of that. Each of your characters and all of your territories and relics have life, and you'll need to keep track of each of those, so you are using dice for all of those things. It's not um, a huge hindrance, it's just a little mechanical, it's a little finicky, is because you have to have these dice everywhere, and you have to kind of keep track of what does what, and because of that, there's in addition to all the health stuff you keep track of, there's a bunch of characters on the board, and you have to go, okay, this one at end of turn does this, these two give you this, this one does this. So if you're fairly, you know, a veteran or even a moderate player for most TCGs, it won't be much of a problem for you, but it is something I can see players getting distressed about. Um, how the game plays is fun. It's smooth, it's flowy, it's really easy to understand. After we played our first couple rounds, we started to get it, and it started becoming more and more apparent who was doing better. But then, all of a sudden, some player would make a really good play, and bam, the, the tides would switch into the favor of the other player. Uh, the game is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this game. If you like TCG-style games, if you like living card-style games, uh, you want something that involves territory is the most unique aspect of this game, being that you can actually switch characters from one position to another, utilizing ranged attacks, and eventually trying to defeat territories, which is important, but defense being a problem, uh, you have to avoid that kind of stuff. But overall, a solid, solid game. I had a lot of fun with territory. If you're interested, take a look down below. Link in the description for Territory, the card game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer card game review for the game Territory the Card Game. If you're interested, like I said, there's a link down below in the description for you guys to go ahead and pick that game up. You can also go check out my wife's game, Moonshell Mermaid Game. The backer kit for it will be set up very shortly. We're just getting the final shipping arrangements set up for it. Um, there'll be a link for that one as well. It funded 26k. Very proud of her. Well done um, on her part. Uh, you can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists. We have new writers that are writing new reviews for games that are not currently on this channel. So if you want some written reviews for some different types of games, then you go and check out there. We have great content there and I'm really excited to see their stuff because they have done some really great work. Uh, it's not just Brian anymore. You can also go ahead and check out our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. If you're watching this today, that will be today at 6.30 p.m. PST on all platforms, YouTube, Twitch, and of course, Facebook, where you can join us in playing games and watching us play games live. Um, It'll be fun, just like this game here. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to... Wait, wait. Subscribe. Subscribe button. And the bell. You probably watched at least one or two of these videos, so... You might as well, so that way you'll see all of our videos. The button. Subscribe. All right, thanks. <laughs> see you next time.